Bridget uh, trained as a, as a civil engineer at Carlo IT. And Bridget is particularly interesting because Bridget is a mature student. So um, there's huge pressure, I think, on, on TYs uh, and leave insert students to know what they want to do with the rest of their lives. But like, it's OK to kind of take your time. Right, Bridget? Tell us your story. Yeah. So I took a slightly different path uh, to my <laughs> career. Um, I would have left school at 16, didn't complete TY. Mm. didn't do a uh, leaving cert and would have gone on to be a factory operative until 2003 yeah. and I went back and I did a career guidance course and I also went and looked at back to education so in 2003 I applied to go back and I did my junior cert and then followed on and did my leaving cert so I applied for Carlo IT in 2006 and was accepted and went on to complete my honours degree in 2011 with Carlo IT in engineering civil engineering um, during that time, then I've actually worked um, in using the AutoCAD, using the skills I was learning throughout my course to earn a living. So I was working at night time, um, earning, doing drawings for um, airs and balconies, and this paid my way through college. I qualified then in 2011, and I started working with a fantastic company, Carlo Precast, which I had done an interview for in March, and I actually was accepted. I finished my exams on a Friday and actually started work on a Monday. Um, I was then promoted in 2012, January 2012, to project manager. Now, 95% of the product was um, precast. It was water and wastewater water precast units that were being shipped to the UK. So I started project managing large projects um, across the UK, traveling to and forth um, and working through the with the production company. Um, I left that company then in 2017 and started a stone cladding, totally different field again. And I worked with um, Stone Tech, which was a Bagginstown based company, and I would have worked on the Watford and the Wexford courthouses. I left that company <laughs> in 2018 and went on to a renewable energy company. Um, when I started with renewable energy, looking and starting to research into it, I actually, it's the one, it just gelled with me. It's something about the renewable energy that really engaged me. And I started to look at this then as a a stop gap. They're not a stop gap, but a kind of a final. This is I've actually found my niche, and I just loved it. So from that, I spoke with my management, and they allowed me to travel across to the Netherlands to learn the systems. And I travelled across into the UK, so I learned the mechanical and electrical systems and all the new solar technologies. Uh, so from there, then um, I would have uh, worked on numerous six megawatts of solar PV and worked with uh, wind turbines and servicing and biomass boilers also. So I'll just uh, share one of my... Yeah, sorry. please do. I'm not sure if you can see that. Sorry, not from it. Yeah, something is coming up. Is it, yes, yes. Okay. yeah, we can see that, yeah. So um, I would have worked on um, one of the largest, it's the largest solar install in Ireland. It would have been installed in 2019, 1.2 megawatt, which was a little under 5,000 panels. I worked an amazing team, 12 weeks on site, it was um, 1.2 megawatt and it was in the little distribution center in Newbridge. It's one of the largest buildings in Ireland. Um, you can see that just the vast size of it was just a little over um, half a kilometer long. Um, it was just over 500 lifts, crane lifts on it. And we would have worked with the team. Um, I would have studied the design. I would have been the project lead and designer on this particular project. Um, we installed um, 16 inverters, 5,000 panels, 2G10s and it's all monitored. So we're generating from an east-west system, generating um, the load of the building, 20% of the load of the building. So from there, then I've gone from strength to strength with uh, renewable energy. I've now just focused completely solar on solar. And I have usually do generally do a course every three months and upgrade all the new technologies and upskill myself on anything that's coming new to the market. Um, it's a very fast moving technology. Um, from that, we've just finished that in 2000. And the panels there would be obsolete now. They wouldn't be sold anywhere. Um, so the panels are upgrading, the systems are upgrading constantly. Um, so it's one of those engineering fact or disciplines that really, really requires a lot of focus and uh, upskilling. And it's actually a fast moving pace mm. and it's very, very mm. enjoyable. Mm. Mm. Why? Then, what was your passion? You said like when you, you said that when you got into the renewable energy, you just knew you'd found your niche and you knew that that was it. So, so what is it that's different about what you're doing in renewable energy compared to all the other 
types of engineering that you were involved in? What makes it um, so much better for you? Why is it a good fit for you? I would have always been, say, artistic, creative, but and a problem solved. But this particular um, projects, I've learned that we monitor. I can see every single um, the the way the solar cre creates the takes the light and creates it into electricity. So every day I can see what we're generating. I'm watching a monitoring system. I have it on my laptop here. I can service the sites from my laptop. So I can see what we're generating, what we're achieving, how much trees we're saving, all our carbon emissions, what we're doing for the environment and the loads on the building. So if you look at, if you take into consideration designs and take each building in isolation, you can design a building, to take the load and um, become efficient and uh, I'll just yeah. say it. Um, well, there's benefits. There's immediate benefits, isn't there? I mean, because you're, yes. as you say, like you're you're reversing the long term uh, problem that we have around um, climate change. So it's yeah, it's it's great. It must be very it's instant. Yeah. It's like so what Marcus, yeah. So and and the other yeah, and Bridget, the other thing is like, I think your story is really interesting. But um, were you all, were you always good at maths in school? Horrendous. <laughs> I wouldn't have, I'll be honest with you, when I was originally back when I started in school, I was not interested in school whatsoever. I left school, delighted I left it, and I yeah. became a factory operative. I was happy enough to leave. But my son was born in 2002, and I started to think uh, there's no, there was no factory jobs. And what I was trained in, I didn't have um, any paths, career paths that I could go on or expand on. So I looked at, I just sat in and decided to go back and speak with a career guidance and say, what was my options? And at that particular time, um, there was a, a career option or a choice to go back and try education again. And if I liked it, but I met a maths teacher and a career guidance teacher that took me under their wing and actually spent time with me. And the particular maths teacher was very challenging. She set targets and goals for me. Yeah. I did my junior research in one in less than seven months and I did my leaving search in less than a year and a half. Wow. Um, and she focused me, but she set me challenges and she set me KPIs and she made me work to achieve it. And um, she really wow. motivated me. She made me think about my skill set and how to use my skill set correctly and it's just the first person I've ever met that actually did that so I embraced it and just when someone was spending that much time on me I just took it on board and actually went around with it so since then I've never looked back. That's fantastic gosh I'm, I'm so glad that that person gave you that time because you're clearly born to do what you love you know it's fantastic Bridget um, thanks a million for, for sharing that. And I think that's particularly apt for people hopefully tuning in today, you know, who who think, oh, I'm not good at maths or whatever. It, it really isn't that, is it? What 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 is it? What made you suddenly go, oh I, I can do maths? Um it was never like it's stripping it back and thinking about it in isolation. Yeah. It's the stop judging yourself and just um try it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Try it yeah. again. Yeah. Put it back. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Bridget. That's brilliant. Okay, I see that we have some questions. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go into the chat. If you unshare yourself there, Bridget, we'll go back yep. to see people. So we're getting some questions in, which is great. And keep asking questions. Like you can see that I'm only scratching the surface with each of these people, and um there's a lot being revealed about how they've managed to get there in life. So the first question.